are picking one of these hosts to lead their team to the next half hour of challenges from out of here at Nick Studios in Florida. And the votes are in. I'm Mike, and I've been voted to be the captain of Green Team. Let's go, Green! Yeah! And I'm Karen, and I've been voted to be the captain of the Purple Team. Yeah! Hey, and I'm Bruce, and I'm going to be seeing what's new out at Universal Studios Florida. Right, and I'm Tiffany, and I'm going to be the host on today's episode of Out of Here. Woo! We're coming to you from out of here, your place at Nick Studios in Orlando, Florida, where kids go nationwide and you decide who's on your side every day on Nickelodeon. I tell you what, my team's looking good, feeling fine. We're going to wipe those guys up in no time, right, guys? Boo! You must not bust, because soon you'll all be smoking up all our dust. Right, guys? Do I sense a certain level of uh, hostility here? Yeah, guys, there's nothing going on too personal between you, is it? Oh, Absolutely no. not. No. no, no. We just want to clean those guys, right? Dream yeah. yeah. Mikey, because you're history. Right, guys? Yeah! I think you guys have been reading too much Dr. Seuss lately. Anyways, I agree. I'm out of here, guys. Oh, boys and girls, play nice now. Bye, <laughs> Bye Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Woo. Now, you might be wondering why these guys have these letters on their heads. Why? Then again, you might not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. You see, they're going to have to write a chain letter. We're going to find out which team could do that first. See, I'm going to read them a question. They're going to have to answer that question and then spell it out with their trusty blockheads. Now, as soon as I read the question to you guys, you can figure it out and start spelling. So, here it is. What is Bart Simpson's favorite comeback for people who get on his case? Hey. Go, guys! What do you think, guys? No. I heard it. Okay. Where? Don't have a count. All right, that's it. Let's okay. Let's it. The green team has it. Help us spell it. Go yeah. clear right. The purple team has the answer. They're spelling with their black heads. They're writing their train letters. Green! That's one! That's only one, Mike. Hey, We're gonna get the next one. Hey, hey, if you two could uh, calm down long enough to meet our first guest, uh, we're gonna watch a clip from the, the TV show first, so catch this. Hello, Bureau for Extra Normal Matters. Ritter speaking. What? You gotta be kidding. On the Judy show? So if you're here for action and adventure, forget it. But I thought... You're an intern. You're not an agent. You get coffee, you copy reports, and you stay out of our... You know, the Bureau has every high-tech gadget you could want, except a lousy cable connection. From Superboy, please welcome actor Peter J. Fernandez. Hi. 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 Well, to start off, tell us about the show Superboys and the character you play. Well, as you know, this uh, show is now in its third season, third and season. it deals with Superboy, who is uh, a being from another planet who has superpowers. Uh, in this case, um, he also has an alter ego. It's Clark Kent, and that he doesn't want to let the world know that he is Superboy. So in his normal life, he's Clark Kent, and in this case, he's now working uh, for a place called the Bureau of Extra Normal Matters. Now, what it is, it's a government bureau that deals with... Um, Unexplained phenomena, I guess you'd say. Those strange things that no one can explain. For instance, you know, they always talk about the dog chasing the mailman. Well, if <laughs> someone were to call the Bureau and say, you know, the mailmen are chasing the dogs all over the city, that's something that's a little extra normal. And uh, I'm uh, a character called Matt Ritter. I'm a field agent. I would go out and run that story down, find out what it's all about. Clark Kent and Lana Lang, his partner, are now working as interns. 
Early last season, they were college students. Now they're interns here at this government bureau trying to learn the trade, so to speak. Okay, and who exactly is Superboy? Well, as I just said, well, I, actually, a lot of people don't really know who he is. It's really funny because I read the comic books as a, as a kid. Superboy was born on another planet called Krypton. And when his parents died and the planet exploded, he was sent in a capsule, I believe, off of the planet. It landed on the planet Earth. Now, uh, a farmer and his wife, named the Kents, found this baby mm. and adopted him. So he's the young Superman. Right, exactly. Okay. And they found that he had superpowers and uh, uh, raised him as their own. But they always told him that, look, you know, uh, you shouldn't let anyone know that you have mm. these powers. Well, as he got older, he realized that he could use these powers for good. So what adventure is a Superboy going to be getting into this new season? Well, you name it, I think it's going to happen. Uh -oh. <laughs> and that it's a new environment, so they're dealing with they're in a larger city this year. Mm -hmm. um, some of the old people from last season will be back. I think uh, Lex Luthor, possibly, and Darla, and uh, maybe Bizarro. Um, actually, there's no limit to the adventures that he can have. He's in a big city where big things happen. Anything so. could happen. Mm -hmm. Now, about your acting history, um, how long have you been acting, or how did you get started? Well, I've been acting professionally for almost 15 years now. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I got started the way uh, a lot of people do. I did a few plays in high school. Uh, and when it came time to go to college, I really didn't know what I wanted to study. My grades were good, but I didn't know what it was I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And the woman that had directed me in the few plays that I had done said, I think you got a little bit of talent there. You might uh, explore the idea of... Uh, becoming a professional. So how, what's the big difference between TV and the stage acting that you've done? Well, television is a little more segmented in that it's broken up. You shoot uh, it in pieces. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're, you're shooting the end of the show before you shoot the beginning. And when you're on stage, you do everything in order, and there's no stops. If you screw up on the stage, <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, I know that story. Um, so when is Superboy starting again? Uh, uh, the new episodes out? begin in early October. Great, so mm -hmm. we'll all be looking for Superboy. I well, sure hope so. Thanks for stopping by the show, everyone. Peter J. Fernandez. That's right. <laughs> there we go. Man. <laughs> you know, I really, really feel bad over there because the purple team is crying, you know, because they lost the last one. And my team just wants to tell them that. Go ahead, guys. Take it for a spin. Ooh, a sweet on like this. Must have been squeezed and must have been kissed. She must have been to blush like this. What a sweet on. It must be sun kissed. Oh, 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 sing on y'all. Sun kissed, sun kissed, sun kissed, sun kissed. Kuila, she's a lucky miss. Sun kissed, sun kissed, sun kissed. Bleacher and I have four very talented performers. These are jam kids. They perform in malls across the country. Can I have your names real quick? Heather. Heather. Diana. Summer. And we're going to give these guys a sample. Ready? Five, six, seven, Cause eight. Because we're the jam kids. Pumped in a jamifying jam kids. I love it. Hey, what's going on, Tiff? Well, sometimes you'll see that celebrity walking by and you'll say, whoo, he's such a doll. Well, that might be more than true because dolls are being fashioned after big name stars. And the dolls we have before you have lost their heads. Now, of course, we replace them, but not exactly with the right heads. You see, we've got two representatives and it's going to be their job to rematch the correct head with the correct body. Now, over on the purple side, we've got these five dolls here that will have to be rematched. 
And on the green side, they have these five dolls over here that will have to be rematched. Now let me tell you who our two representatives are. For the purple side, we have Amanda from Orangeburg, South Carolina. And for the green, we have Matt from Highland Park, Illinois. Here they come, give them a hand. Okay guys, well, good luck. I need 30 seconds on the clock. On your marks, get set and go. All right, they're rematching their kids. There goes the heads. Oh, a head rolled away. Okay. Come around side for me, Amanda. All right, we have them. Now, let's start on the purple side and do some review here. This is definitely Fred Flintstone. Yes, this is Madonna for Breathless Mahoney. Take your head up here, Pee Wee Herman. Yes, Wonder Woman and uh, Bart Simpson. These are all correct. Congratulations, purple. All right, let's review it for the green. Yes, this is Ernest. That is correct. And here we have Mario. Up here, Dick Tracy. Yes, Beetlejuice and Michelangelo. These five are correct, but they finished a little bit earlier, so it goes to the purple. <laughs> okay, now we've got some real kids who review movies once a week for the Orlando Sentinel, a newspaper here in Florida, and they're going to give us their opinion about the flicks out this summer. So let's take a look at our first clip. Is this him? Is this you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cute. White, but cute. <laughs> what I don't understand is, why did he come back? I don't know. Why is he still here? He's stuck. That's what it is. He's in between worlds. You know what happens sometimes? The, the spirit gets yanked out so quick that the essence still feels like it has work to do on here. Would you stop rambling? I don't think I'm rambling. I'm just answering a question. He's got an attitude now. Well, that was Ghost, and Eric was going to tell us what he thought about that. So, what did you think, Eric? Well, Ghost has done really well at the box office, and rightfully so. Um, Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore turn out their best performances ever. And as you could see in the clip, Whoopi Goldberg is hilarious. So, you really enjoyed Whoopi's performance? Yes, it's, it's really... And, and how about the special effects? Um, the special effects are pretty mediocre. Um, there's really nothing innovative about them. I wouldn't see the movie for its special effects. But is this something that the kids should run out and see? Well, it's kind of a tearjerker. It'd probably appeal more to adults than kids, so, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to kids, really. Well, thanks a lot, Eric. Now we're going to take a look at Days of Thunder. Those tires are matched, perfect, and staggered spectrum. You're going to get it killed! The pace car's about ready to duck on off. If you go to the outside, you can hold it. All right, Harry, when it comes to the car, I take your word. <laughs> Well, that was Days of Thunder, and Jamie Finch is going to tell us what she thought. So, what did you think, Jamie? Well, it's a typical Tom Cruise movie. Not to say that that's bad at all, but you know, it really is a good movie. And the acting is great, although Tom Cruise does come across as a little bit of a comic book character. Robert Duvall does a great job at being believable as the mentor. So. And how was the race car driving? In the well, movie? as you can see from the clip, it's really... A exciting you know it does a great job of getting you in there in the action so you really feel like you're in with the cars and it's really exciting so you found this really exciting and should the kids run out and see it do mom and dad have to tag along you think um, well the younger kids maybe I don't think they would really enjoy it that much older kids like older high school kids and adults too it's just more of a, um, for people who like competition and who understand that one-upsmanship mm. well thank you Jamie we're gonna take a look now at taking care of business I've been going through a rough period lately, Spencer. My dog, Maybelline, died recently. She was so outgoing and, and intelligent. You know, she was... Here, I've got this picture. She was a Capricorn. Isn't she sweet? She doesn't even look sick. Yeah, well, that's an old picture. Well, that was Taking Care of Business, and Carrie Green's going to tell us all about what she thought of that film. So what did you, do, what did you think, Carrie? Um, well, I thought it was your typical Training Places kind of movie. Um, it had its moments, but they're kind of few and far between. Uh, um, I really liked Jim Belushi. He came across as very likable, but it just wasn't very funny. 
And how was Charles Grodin in the film? Charles Grodin was good as well. He had that typical terror-stricken look down <laughs> pat. And um, how about the, was it believable? That's well, the plot was kind of unoriginal, it, so it really wasn't that believable. And is this something that kids should run out and see? Mm, well, they could, they could if they wanted to, but I'd pass. Oh, you'd take a pass. Well, there we have it, the movies we should go see this weekend. Again, I'd like to thank Carrie, Jamie, and Eric for joining us. Well, we did it again, guys. I don't know about you, but I expected it. So all we have to yeah. say is, guys, one, two, three, keep the faith! All right! Let's kill it, cause we're running out of time. It's all so relationship. Well, as you may know, the weekend is coming up very rapidly. <laughs> and these young ladies are going to go out and party all weekend long. And I just want to know, what are some of the lines that are going to get thrown upon you guys? You got one? What's a line? What time is it? What? What did it go? What time is it, babe? Yeah. Now, would it say any of the lines? Yeah, um, there's one, like, if they see you and they go, yeah, we saw you walking down the street. Yeah. Oh, you, we, you, we think you're the best out of all everyone here. Yeah, right, you know. So if you're a girl out there and you're going out, beware of these lines because the guys are going to get you. Tiff? Well, Out of Here is your place at Nick Studios, and we want you to help us out with a new project we're starting. We want you to send us shoelaces, any kind of shoelaces, long, short, decorated, or plain, because we're going to make a giant shoelace ball. We're going to time together, and every so often we're going to roll it out and show you how big it's gotten. In a couple of weeks, we'll unravel the shoelaces and show you just how long you've made it. So here's the address at our mailbag. Out of Here, 4630. South Kirkman Road, number 315, Orlando, Florida, 32811. Now, we'll show you that address again at the end of the show, but right now we want you to check out this video by David J. I'll be a chauffeur, drive you to a distant shore, fill the tank with gas and dreams, the twinkle of stars shall be a semaphore, guide us to that place. Shall stay in Arida Restore. I'll be your chauffeur, the gopher who will fetch and carry you home. So kill the bones, move our sofa. I'll turn the key, let these four wheels grow. We'll take it at a steady pace. Shooting star to chase in a carriage made of leather wood and gold. I'll check the water, I'll take the wheel. That was David J. with I'll Be Your Chauffeur, and that's the video we're using on Soundcheck today. So let's meet our two players from the green and purple team uh, on the purple. Give me your name and where you're from. Hi, my name is Jamie, and I'm from Columbia, Maryland. All right, Jamie. By the way, I heard it's your birthday. Happy birthday. And from the green we have... Hi, I'm Tina. I'm from Canton, Michigan. All right, that's for the green. Our total recall category on a scale of one to ten, I want to know is this song implanted in your brain? We're gonna start up here with Jamie. What do you think? No, it's not implanted in my brain, but I think I'll be hearing I'll be your chauffeur for a while. So what would you give it on the one to ten? I'll give it a, a four for Jamie. Let's put that up here. And Tina, what did you think? I think I'll forget it tomorrow. <laughs> She's going to forget it. So, what do you give it on the one to ten? A one. A one for Tina. Let's put that up here. Which way does that go? Is that right? Here we go. Okay, sucker punch category. How were the lyrics? Did they hit you right here, right in the heart? What do you think, Jamie? No, they didn't. They, they didn't hit you at all. No, they didn't have any meaning to me. So, what, what's your rating for the day? A two. A two. They're being real kind today. Let's put that on up here. And Tino, how about for you? I couldn't understand half the word. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so what do you what do you give it today? I'll give it a two. Okay. 
All um, right. And then our last category is the double take. How many times would you watch this if it was playing over and over again? Jamie? Once. Once. It's going to give it one take. And how about you, Tina? After twice, I'd run out of the room. <laughs> so she's going to give it a two. All right. Well, there we have it. That's what two people think. Well, it's time for the instant poll on out of here. So you get three choices, everybody. A, David J can give me a lift anytime. B, I'll be your chauffeur, or being your chauffeur drives me up a wall. Or C, I'll just wait in the car. Okay, guys, make your choices and vote now. Well, Jamie, Tina, it looks like they agreed with you because they said, see, I'll just wait in the car. Everyone, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Bruce has been quiet too long, so let's check in on him in the park. If you think you've been seeing a lot of pot fillers lately, look again. It might just be bike packs that are causing those unsightly bulges. Bike packs are an easy new way to carry your junk around, and the craze seems to have been catching on with tourists. Even famous designers like Gucci are getting into this act. Dad looks like he packed for the weekend.